In the next couple of videos and tutorial problems, we're going to be looking at a very specific application of centroids and distributed loading that we've already examined, where we encounter problems that involve hydrostatic fluid pressure. And so I probably should qualify this, that this is not dynamic fluid pressure when a fluid is moving, but when a fluid is at rest. So we call this hydrostatic fluid pressure and so I have on the illustration here I have the surface at the top of a body of fluid I've done this surface in blue because a lot of the time we encounter problems where the water is where this fluid we encounter is actually water and we denote the surface of a body of fluid by this symbol. So we have a triangle and a couple of these little dashes underneath to show that this is the surface. And we're interested in what the fluid pressure is on this little element of fluid that is a distance h below the surface. And imagine if you go swimming or maybe you're on an aeroplane and it's coming into land that you can understand that the fluid pressure gets higher and higher as you get deeper and deeper into a body of a fluid. And we're going to go on now to define what that pressure would be. But before that, we should also mention that pressure now is the force per unit area. So we have force in Newtons and the area on what a force is acting in meters squared for area. And also this is sometimes called a Pascal. So one Newton per meter squared is a Pascal. So that's the definition of what we'll call pressure, force per unit area. So we're going to consider, again, this little element of pressure. And it turns out the pressure varies from zero at the surface, and it varies linearly as we go down with depth H into the body of the fluid. So let's write that in a mathematical way that the pressure equals something to do with H and it's going to be linear so M times H and it turns out this proportion of linearity is dependent on the gravity field that you're in so it could be different on a different planet from Earth but in this Generally, we have G for gravity 9.81. And also, it depends upon the density of the fluid. So, the density of air is much less than that of water. So, how quickly the pressure goes up as you come into land is not as dramatic as how quickly the pressure goes up as you dive into water. So, if you go diving into 10 meters of water, actually the pressure is pretty significant on your ears and on your body. Whereas going many hundreds of meters into the air on an airplane is not so big a problem. So now we have this statement. So pressure equals rho g h. So what we're gonna do now just to satisfy ourselves is have a look at the dimensions for this system. So pressure had force per unit area meters squared. Rho, the mass density of a piece of material, is kilograms per meter cubed. Then we had gravity, which is an acceleration. So that's in meters per second squared and we have the height or the depth that you are into this fluid which now is in meters. 
So if we remember that the force newtons is mass times acceleration, so we have kilograms and then acceleration down to g. So this is newtons. This meter cancels with this to become meter squared. So we end up with newtons per meter squared. And so this statement here, P, pressure, equals rho gh is dimensionally consistent. This formula also gets written in a slightly different way. And the different way that it can, you might see it written is P equals gamma times H. So gamma, looking at the previous formula, is rho times G. And this quantity is referred to as the specific weight. So using weight, because we're already multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity and specific because it's for a unit volume. Okay, so we're going to move on in the next video to seeing how we can apply this fluid pressure to a problem and work out what the equivalent force on a wall is and then we're going to progressively go on to more engineering style problems where we have to solve maybe what reactions we need on a gate.